<laughs> it's simple, really. Great stories with a good cup of tea. It's the Tea with Mike show. Hi guys, welcome to another episode of the Tea with Mike show. Uh, joining me today is uh, Sarah. Welcome to Tea with Mike, Sarah. Hello, hello. I've got my tea. I see you do. Uh, mm. Uh, you cannot go wrong with Aristocats, so, so. <laughs> one of my favorite so, Disney shows. Nice, and so on uh, today's episode, we're going to be talking about theater, uh, film, uh, television, but we're also going to be mixing it up with uh, some cooking and the culinary arts, and maybe if you're lucky, uh, Sarah will talk about some archery. Uh, so Sarah, seeing as you've already alluded to the fact that you're drinking tea, what, what yes, tea sir. are you drinking today? Well, um, I, I I drink all natural teas. Um, I hate to do a little bit of plug, but most of my stuff I get from, of course, David's Tea or I make at home. So uh, today I've got a, a lemon ginger peach. Um, I actually, and what I mean by <laughs> ginger as well, I'm like, I use real ginger in my tea, oh, real cool. lemon. Yeah, um, it's actually very healthy. Um, I, I'm not a health nut, but, um, I've got that and I make sure I steep it for a good 15 minutes before I start drinking it. Um, I do reheat it a little, little bit with a little extra water. So, um, yeah, so that's what I got today. Awesome. And, and, and so how long have you been a tea fan? How long have you been making your own tea? Cause lots of people are obviously oh, let's see. put a tea bag in. I'm 43. Yeah, I'm 43. I started in high school. <laughs> So oh, that should give you an idea. Um, I, I'm not a tea hall. Like, I have a friend who is. Uh, yeah, she buys, like, $200 worth of tea every month, and she goes through it every month. So she's not every month. every month. So she's a big David's Tea. She probably puts a lot of them through college. Um, but, no, I always have at least two to three cups a day. Um, I drink a lot of tea when I'm doing uh, video editing. Um, I have a lot of people say, well, why, do you, why don't you just drink coffee? Uh, no. Uh, my place is nice and clean. I have nice walls. I drink coffee and I'll be repairing the walls. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, tea actually is a very, com it's a calming thing for me. So, uh, when I'm working on anything from like horror to comedy to a few trailers or whatnot that I'm editing or doing visual effects for, or if I'm doing some anime for a friend out in Japan because we trade projects back and forth. Uh, oh, cool. I, always, I always sit down with tea. Yeah, actually, it's kind of funny. I got her hooked onto it and uh, we've got this uh, nice um, kind of tea pen pal thing going on. Uh, she sends me some. I send her some and we try different stuff. She sends me some really weird shit. Man, <laughs> I don't really <laughs> Um, yeah, I've never had lime matcha before, but never again. <laughs> well, it's a cool system, right? Like, because you both benefit from from it, you a little bit keep that adventure. There must yeah. there must have been a few, there must have been a few that have been a hit, and then obviously, as you just talked about, there's some that clearly aren't a hit. Yeah, like um, Hokkaido tea. Uh, yeah, never again. But it does have a very interesting lingering aftertaste, which is not bad. So, in other words, clam tea. <laughs> so, but um, yeah. So, I like my tea. Very cool. And, and so, I guess today's tea fact for the episode is so, black, green, and white tea are all made from leaves of the same evergreen shrub. Herbal tea, on the other hand, uh, involves pouring apparently hot water over any plant in the world other than the tea plant and this comes from nutritionfacts.org that's one of the best parts about the show for me of having the great stories is really just diving deep and learning more about tea as i'm doing my research yeah well Tea actually has a lot of beneficial, like people think like, oh, it's going, let's caffeinate. Actually, if you make your own teas and whatnot, you can get some uh, pretty good non-caffeinated stuff. So, so uh, I'm like some of my favorite teas, of course, cold 911, come on, who doesn't like that stuff? So it has a nice, strong menthol eucalyptus kind of taste to it. But like, if you know how to make your own teas and you do it properly, then yeah, you're right. You can use almost any plant in the world and just uh, dry them out crunch them down, put them in. You can actually even use, uh, take uh, dehydrated uh, um, apple skin, pears, plums, what all that other stuff munching down and they have a very fruity flavor and add it with a bit of um, uh, turmeric, uh, rose hips and all that. So, yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, cool. So, so, what, so when you're making tea from scratch, how long does it take you? Uh, it takes me a couple. All the leaves part too. Uh, the, the leaves I have to bring in, but yeah. usually when I do, um, if I'm dehydrating, dehydrating stuff, it takes me a little bit. So it can take anyways from a couple days to a couple weeks, depending on how I do it properly and what I want. So, 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 so it's almost like a, a, another a task within the, within the day or within, in the week, within the month to decide what tea you'd like to have in two weeks to like start the uh, process. Hey, I've got eggnog tea, so if you ever have a chance to do that, I'm like, I've got some stuff getting ready for that, which is uh, getting ready for uh, Christmas. It's only like, what, April? <laughs> yeah, so, it's yeah. Like, I believe it's only April, middle of April. So, yeah. Better, better to be prepared. Oh, of course. Egg, very cool. So, do you want to tell everyone a little bit about you and all the, well, all the things that you do? Let's see. Well... Uh, originally, I'm from Earth, although I think I'm from another planet sometimes. Um, I, I'm a person of many trades. I'm like the Jill of all trades type thing. Um, uh, I started in film and TV when I was very young um, and have been in, in ever since. Uh, did more acting uh, when I was kind of like a child kind of teenager and did some stuff on stage, um, acted with Jackie Bland, um, been in a few big productions with the Citadel Theater. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, acted in, uh, in 93, 92 and 93 for, for the teen festival that they used to have, which is of course discontinued and, uh, had fun with the Citadel Theater. Um, did some stuff with, uh, on the Jube and that was fun. And then, uh, I ended up having a taste of, working a few shows backstage when I was high school and I'm like going, Oh, screw this. I'm done with being on stage. I hate being <laughs> in people anyways, which is funny. Hi camera. Um, I, I, I am not a people person, but backstage working behind the cameras or behind the scenes. Oh, that was fun as hell. Um, so yeah, so I did that for many years. Um, I graduated from, uh, well back then it was called Grant McCune. So, well, Grant McCune, McCune University, I went through the theater production, theater arts program. Uh, I went through a digital media program years after, but I also completed my RTA at Nate. I did uh, wow. creative screenwriting, whatnot, through uh, Florida State University, went to Vancouver Films, so of course, it's all this. But of course, when you have like social problems with people and it's hard working on sets and whatnot it's like eh. so i found my niche doing a lot of post-production because at that point i'm like hey i can just live at home and say screw you covid so <laughs> yeah um so yeah so i ended up uh started getting into uh filming tv um uh, i did some community uh production work with uh shaw tv for about four years nice. that was Fun as heck. Um, and then I did a lot of uncredited behind the scenes stuff. Um, thanks to connections um, and in uh, Florida and California who got me onto some Disney stuff. Uh, so Ooh. that was fun. Yeah, I did some Disney stuff. Can't really say much. Anyways, I really yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, but uh, it was fun. And then I just hopped around from production to production, kind of helping with whatever else needed. Um, yeah, and then, um, and then of course during my time with uh, Shaw, I ended up having this kind of cool idea, which actually came from one of my best friends, who's like my sister Rachel, and we came up with an idea for doing a cooking show. And so, because I also have a culinary background, um, I actually did uh, complete my Red Seal through Nate's Culinary Arts Program. Oh, <laughs> not, with, not with the highest marks, of course. This was like... But it's still another thing that you, you, you yeah. achieved. I, I like cooking. Like I hate kitchens. You achieved a lot in a short space of time. Yeah. How many people can say that they've done a Red Seal Program? They worked on the Disney productions. I had, they, I had no life. Did stuff for, I, I guess, in multiple countries. Don't et cetera, have many... Et cetera. Yeah, I don't have I don't have any friends back then, and I just kind of kept to myself. So I just worked, 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 and that was all I ever did. So uh, now it's a little different now. I've kind of grown up a bit. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, so I we kind of combined my love of cooking and ideas for recipes together, and created a show called Dinner by the Minutes, and uh, ended up throughout the years. And I created and published my first two cookbooks. Yay! So. Right, okay. uh, very exciting. Do, 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 do you want to bring them on one at a time? Or put, put oh, them sure. Um, I will show you so my first. It works. Yeah. So this is yeah. our very first cookbook. Move it. Um, move, move it. Move it. Move it. 
So the rubber. Oh, there you go. If you lean back and then in the. Yeah. Well. So. So yeah. So there this. Yeah. Yeah. So it has uh, about 200 recipes, um, ranging from uh, cheesy poofs to uh, yes, Vulcan plum leek soup is in here. So um, although it's not you my mean the per minute, is that why it's called dinner under the minute? Under no, the... dinner by the minute. So oh, words, dinner by the minute. It's supposed to be recipes that are frugal, healthy, and simple to make. It doesn't take a lot of time, and uh, you can use your own ingredients. So you don't. So every recipe that is in this book, okay, uses all natural ingredients. Nothing in here is processed. Nothing in here is store bought. Well, the separate ingredients. That is, uh, like there's nothing canned or anything else. So we have lettuce. We use lettuce. Um, so yeah. So that's what this one has and we've got many different recipes if you want i can uh send a link to some of the viewers uh to where they can purchase the book itself or the yeah, no, okay. or the digital copy itself i do have a digital copy people can download and buy uh but there's drinks in here i've got a few tea recipes in here of course yeah, uh, nice. yeah. and then of course our second book which is about a third of the size is uh it's our all about soups so over a little bit soups Soups, stews, chowders, that oh, good? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, there you go. Oh, so uh, this is our one about soups, stews, and chowders. And uh, some of my uh, very lovely Ooh. recipes are in this. Yeah, so this is a very good one. This, <laughs> this is our ginger pork and noodle, which is actually a favorite. Um, uh, we've got our cheeseburger soup, so a Ooh. creamy cheeseburger. Uh, that's been kind of a favorite. Um, and of course, we have my favorite, of course, um, natural egg drop, uh, Japanese style uh, spooko soup. Yummy. So yeah, like, yeah. So um, so that was pretty good. And uh, the show kind of fizzled a little bit. I've been trying to keep it up and running just more recipe wise since the fall of Shaw and all that. So but aside when I'm, of course, I'm not doing that, or if I'm doing visual effects or audio, um, as you also mentioned earlier, I teach kids how to shoot things. <laughs> uh, Nicole, how, how, how did you uh, get into archery and uh, bowmanship? <clears throat> well, I started doing uh, archery about five years ago, um, and then I've been kind of teaching uh, school groups and youth out at a place called Birch Bay Ranch. Um, it is a Christian camp in the summer, but throughout some of the years, it is a rental facility. So I, I teach kids how to shoot arrows. I teach them how to do it properly, safely, and within the rules of responsibility and how to use a, a very lethal weapon. Uh, because despite that a target arrow may seem dull and blunt with enough force, it can kill something so of course you have to be careful um so yeah i got into that and uh i kind of just help maintain a lot of their equipment out there and just help with the kids and the school groups that come out that want to learn how to do archery so it's a good skill to have because i swear to god if the zombie apocalypse comes you guys are all screwed <laughs> <laughs> So, 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 so what got you into archery kind of uh, in, in the first place um I got into archery because I am not an athlete. I am not a sports person, but I needed something that I could say, hey, maybe I can become an athlete or do some exercise. But at the same time, give me a little bit more focus and a little bit more patience because I tend to have a very chaotic or crazy life. So I thought, oh, this seems kind of fun. I can just like be patient. It, like archery teaches you how to slow down it teaches you the finer points of um fine tuning focusing and everything else and what i like to teach the kids is like there are three things i i teach them about archery there's persistence there's patience and then there's practice um about almost two years ago now um with enough patience and practice i actually split my first arrow <laughs> So. And, uh, and for those that don't know what that means, do you want to uh, elaborate a little bit? Um, I can do a little bit more than elaborate. Just give me one second here. Okay. Alrighty. Thank you for letting me come off camera. So splitting an arrow means shooting one arrow into the other and getting the result of splitting, literally, the arrow in half. Oh, wow. So... I actually uh, fired an arrow. It got stuck in this. Oh, 
okay. this is one of her arrows. I kept the arrow because, of course, this is like how many people can actually say, yeah, do you know what? I split an arrow. So I actually did split this arrow. And uh, the funny thing about it is I wasn't even trying. So, ooh, ouch, fiberglass. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very fun sport, but I do mainly recurve, not compound. I find compound is like cheating, but whatever. And what's the uh, di difference between the two? Uh, compound has wheels on it. it. You can have a harder drawback, has more energy, shoot farther, mainly used in hunting a lot. Uh, recurve is just this big, long, bendy uh, stick type thing. Well, we uh, take down the limbs and everything else, but you pull it back and there's no wheels. It uses the actual kinetic force of the wooden limbs to launch your arrow. And contrary to Papa believes, the strings are not elastic. People always ask me, oh, the strings must be elastic. No, no, no. They're actually pretty darn hard. So. Very cool. And then, so, and then, so obviously, as we've we kind of touched on, you've been doing a, you do a lot of different things. Yeah. Of all the different things you do, do you, do you have a favorite? Um, I think one of my favorites, and it's just more something I do in my spare time, which in a way we haven't touched about, is I do a lot of writing. Um. I, I write my own scripts. I write my own books. Um, I've got stories out the yin yang. I've got a few things up on Wattpad. Um, I wrote my first crossover series. It's There's nine books that all tie into each other, but they all cross over into each other. But yet they're all still separate stories. Um, so yeah, so I do a lot of writing. Um, and then when I'm not doing that, um, I do a lot of game streaming for people and for uh, gaming groups. So d and I do... Uh, stuff with the Mercs and Mischief. They are a uh, Dungeons and Dragons um, group. <laughs> kind of hilarious, actually. Quite fun. And um, and then uh, uh, Mistech. I do a lot of uh, online stuff with them. Uh, my biggest thing for gaming, because gaming for me is how I like to unwind, how I like to relax when I'm not doing unwinding and relaxing in, in the other sense. Uh, <laughs> so I, 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 I'm big. Like, I... So if anyone follows me on my Facebook or other thing, whenever I uh, coin the term, yeah, I'm going to go play with my dinosaurs. Um, there's a game out there called Ark. Uh, Google it, look it up. It's kind of fun. Um, okay. So, uh, so I actually will go and play with my dinosaurs. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like not many else can say, oh, yeah, I still play with dinosaurs. Um, and then, of course, I got a lot of um, uh, city building games. Uh, city Skylines is one of my favorites. Um, and I just got Planet Zoo a little while ago. And so right now I'm in the midst of building my own uh, zoo. And, yeah, so I like building games. I'm not a... Let's go out and shoot games. Um, the Warframe is a little bit different, so. But yeah. Uh, very cool. And then, so in your bio, did I see you do, uh, do, do, doing some work with eSports? Yeah. So eSports. Um, there are eSport groups out there, and what I do is my whole thing I have at home is I've got a broadcast rig, so I will That's take all of their streams combine them up and I'll make an actual presentation and a show and then I pump it all out so like, so like video streaming and production. it's like video streaming the only thing is oh. they just don't do it I do all the technical back-end work and I make it look like a TV show I make it look like an actual sports show like you see for if you're watching um, like football or soccer or hockey so okay, what, yeah. you know those okay. type of things I do that but for the gaming so I actually have a way of pulling in all of their feeds from not just their webcams but from their computers as well and then I broadcast them out and I just sit here and I do all the switching I don't have to say a single work because it's all done um there are a few shows where i just hit one button and it's all automated so i'm like yeah sweet i can sit down watch netflix and do a show at the same time that's that's very that's very 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 uh, impressive yeah so it's, go it's called how to be lazy the right way so um if we if we go back a bit what 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 is it that you think has sparked your interest in all of these different things and then uh, as you develop these interests how have you i guess developed new skills to um st stay up to, to date and also to achieve cool stuff like building your own broadcasting rig and uh, video streaming oh uh it's very easy i blame my parents okay <laughs> um my dad used to coin a phrase that doesn't matter how old you are, you're always going to learn something in life. 
Um, and of course, this came from one of the former ministers of education, uh, David King, who's my dad here in Alberta, um, who has always taught me that just don't ever stop learning. I'm like, doesn't matter what it is, just learn it. So I actually find time in my schedule and I say, do you know what? I am going to learn this today or I'm going to learn this in the next couple of weeks. And I will literally take the time out and I will learn it no matter how kind of crazy it may sound. Um, I'm actually going back to school uh, next week. So next Monday, I'm going to be in a week long school of a school and doing, uh, no leader, yeah, doing leadership uh, courses. They were all supposed to be in classroom, but now they're all online. So I'm like going sweet. Anyways. Um, oh, I hate classrooms, but I'm like, it's all, it's all online. I'll just do that. I'm like, Anyways, um, so yeah, so uh, my parents have always been supportive in me kind of learning, picking up something new. And, and that's the thing is regardless if I ever use it or not, um, I will learn it. Um, I mean, like one of the weirdest things I would say I have learned, done successfully and with great fluke is I actually rebuilt the engine on my car by myself using YouTube videos from scratch. So. Wow. Yeah, uh, so I actually tore down my engine um, after a gasket blew, um, took off the heads, rebuilt the pistons, rebuilt the cylinders, rebuilt everything, put it all back together, and still running. So works cool, quite nice. And I did that just by looking at YouTube videos and saying, oh, this is what needs to be done. Oh, this is what needs to be done. And that's how you learn it. Um, so I am actually quite mechanically inclined now. I can do my own brakes. I can do my own suspension. I can do my own fluid changes. I can even uh, turn the radio on. So yeah, so all those little things. So you must save yourself a lot of money. <laughs> oh, uh, yes, to a point. I actually had to take my car in to get the, uh, the air conditioning done because, of course, that I couldn't do myself. That's because I, I don't want to break the law and releasing all those toxic fumes. I'll, but then again, I'd be just like any other politician right now. So, um, so yeah, so I just, uh, yeah, do it myself. Um, but the one thing I will say is that um, despite everything I've learned, I have to thank the film industry the theater industry, the TV industry for, because all those three industries taught me how to do my own plumbing, how to do my own carpentry mm -hmm. as doing set designs, how to make my own clothes, doing wardrobe, um, how to do nice pictures for photography or cinematography. Um, it's improved my grammar for my writing. I'm like, mm -hmm. a lot of people don't understand that the film industry is very versatile because you're learning a lot of sub skills that you can use in everyday life. So, yeah. so I've done and that. And, and what I do is um, I will also uh, work on sets as a set medic because I've got uh, first aid in my background with that. Um, but at the same time, um, I will also do uh, set catering, craft services, because dinner by the minute, I've got my culinary background, I'll do that. Um, or I'll do animal wrangling, like my rabbit that I have, I eat beaver, um, has been on a few shows as well. And uh, But for me, it's just, I do it for the experience, not necessarily the money, it's a passion. And I, I learned so much on how things operate with that. So like, yeah, the industry is kind of really nice. I actually thank the industry for teaching me all those lovely things. <laughs> And then do you find it's easier to get work and opportunities because you have such a wide range of skills and if, if need be, two positions can become one, that sort of thing? Uh, yes oh, and no. Oh, I The yes is like, I'm very versatile, so I can almost do almost anything. Great. So you can apply and for lots. Fortunately, trying to find the work has been quite a nightmare because, of course, I don't do the work as much as other people do who, who are full-time. So if there's a full-time cinematographer, I, I don't do it full-time enough to have the skills and expertise that they do or being a boom operator or anything else. Like I have the skills. I just don't have the long-term um, experience to do that stuff. So I'm trying to do it w what I can. Um, unfortunately, of course, I do struggle with uh, permanent disabilities as well. And that, tends to become a barrier to a lot of shows I do because of course I have to do everything that's within my physical and mental limitations and it, it can get quite rough. Um, I, I, I've lost um, chances to be on shows because um, I have an epileptic background. I've collapsed on sets before and it becomes liability or something has happened. So it's kind of hard to try to 
secure gainful employment all the time. So I do a lot of gig work. Hey, great. If you need this done, not a problem. I'll do this. Or you need this done. Hey, I, like, I'm always there for people. Ask around. I am there whenever they need it. Not a problem. And I do the best I can. So, yeah. Well, really cool. Sounds like you're making the most of it. Unfortunate uh, circumstances. Uh, that's all we can do. I'm like, um, we all we all have our struggles. How we struggle um, depends on how we're going to get through that struggle as well. Um, I try to take them, uh, take my disadvantages and turn them into advantages. Um, uh, I uh, years ago in 2012. I suffered uh, about a bacterial meningitis. I lost my hearing for almost a year and a half. It took a long time for it to come back. It's not fully back. I have hearing deficiencies, um, auditory processing. But because of that, I'm like, I'm not going to sit on my butt and just do absolutely nothing. I'm like, I'm going to turn on. So I got back into writing. So I wrote, wrote published some books. Great. Did some stories. Great. Uh, scripts here and there and whatnot and that's what it does i i took those advantages um i worked on a few sets i although i couldn't hear anything um i still did what i can uh within the limitations that i could um yeah so that's just how i struggle i take my struggles and i turn them into advantages whenever i can it's not easy but yeah and then and then also and then going back to, to the broadcasting rig that you built, like, do, do, did it cost a lot of uh, money to kind of uh, s s yes. s maintain? <laughs> uh, it doesn't cost much to maintain, but it does co it did cost a lot to build. Um, it took years of planning and saving to get saying, okay, well, in five years, I'm going to need this. This is the hardware now. What's the hardware going to be like then? Um, because of course, when you work on a lim limited income, a limited budget, almost any money I make from my shows just goes into stuff that can help me later on. So I don't tech technically, I don't make a profit. I don't make an income or, uh, anything like that. it will be nice. You're always could. reinvesting. I'm always reinvesting because I have to try to keep up with everybody else. Um, I'm like, I live on less than a couple, like a less than about $1,500 a month. Um, and that's hard enough as is. So how does someone like me try to keep up with everybody else who has, who can spend the money on all these lovely gadgets and have all this lovely income and everything else? Um, like I find free ways around, like um, I'm, I'm still using like Adobe CS6, which is like almost 10 years old now, because uh, at the time I bought it, it was uh, non-subscription based. So screw you, Adobe. Um, but I, I still use it because it works. OK, um, I'll still use whatever I can within my financial budget because it, it works. Uh, Blender for all my um, VFX rendering. Um, it took me a while. I saved up. I got Octane. Um, still learning it. It's a bit of a learning curve. Uh, but um, yeah, it's just trying to keep up, though, has been a bit of a nightmare. It's like, what do you call it? Um, I'm trying to think of the phrase. Keeping up with the Joneses in the industry. Um, <laughs> I, I don't think I ever will be able to, but it's just nice to be able to at least contribute however I am able to. So. Awesome. Uh, very cool. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously very inspiring oh, thank uh, you. to lots of people, including, including myself. And um, so, uh, yeah, no, go ahead. And don't let anything stop you with uh, trying to get somewhere in life. Um, if I can Please. use this time to give advice to people out there. I was literally just going to ask you that. <laughs> um, just um, no matter how much you fight with yourself and I do that all the time because um, chronic depression can really get to you um, you definitely want to take time to slow down experience things around you see the world around you I don't get as much traveling in as I used to um, Family is always an important thing. Um, my family doesn't normally consist of my immediate family because, uh, one, I'm adopted. And so my immediate adopted family, like, they're awesome. They're great. My parents, I talk to them a lot. Um, but I have a, I have such a security that no matter where you come from or how bad your background was, and um, I've got an autobiography with all that going on right now, don't let it stop and slow you down it will slow you down in some aspects because you're limited to what you feel you can do but without the support there from others 
um, I, I would not have been able to get to where I am today. And for others out there, utilize your network of people to help you. And the one thing I really hate in this world, and I'm going to use the word hate, I know it's a very strong word, is people who expect to get paid for helping others. I'm sorry, but helping someone out of the need of compassion is the moral and ethically thing to do as opposed to money. Um, we live in such a greedy society. It's like, yeah, I'll do that for like a hundred bucks. I'm like, oh, even though it's going to take like five seconds or something, whatnot. I'm like, knowledge itself should be free. And I'm a very big supporter in the fact that knowledge itself, if you, if somebody has a question, give them an answer. I'm not going to pay like a hundred dollars to someone who says, yeah, okay, I'm going to give you the answer for like 10 bucks. Well, nowadays you can just almost Google anything, but, <laughs> but the same thing is it comes to help. I'm like, um, a little shout out to Kelly Wolford. I'm like, he helped me with my dinner by the minutes. He understood that I am not a big client. I don't have all this fancy money. Uh, how am I going to put on a cooking show with um, no money? I cannot, like, unlike some, I cannot apply for grants or it will affect my age. So what do I do? Well, I approach him. I told him what I need. I'm not looking for fancy equipment. I'm not looking for anything else. Uh, so he gave me a really good deal on rental equipment to put together episodes. So I did two years out of that. So it's people like that that are able to understand a person's need and to find the compromise that will benefit both and all, on those common grounds is great. That's what we need more in this world. We need more people that can understand and find ways around um, to work with each other. Instead of just saying, I'm not going to do this unless you pay me. If not that, uh, you're not worth my time. I'm like, we're all compassionate human beings. Let's start acting like it. So, and unfortunately with things going on right now, I'm like, I, I, I think what you're doing right now with the show is great. You're talking to people, getting to know them, and it's spreading the word of how can we create a positive world and society out there with people just be able to talk. Um a lot of people don't do that anymore. Um, for example, like we all have lovely cell phones. Yes, I will, do. I will call people. I hate texting. Okay, because texting you lose the context of a conversation with what you're saying. And I have lost friends. I've alienated family because of some simple conversations on texting, because it's like. There's no emotion behind texting. There's no feeling. I'd rather just pick up a damn phone and say, hey, how are you doing? Great. Let's talk about this. And a lot of people don't do that anymore. We're all so busy looking down at our phones, looking down at the street, looking down that we don't see anything else that's in front of us. I'm like, for fuck's sake, people, pardon my language, um, let's put your phone down for a bit. It's not the end of the entire world. I There are days where I'll actually literally shut my phone off and uh, and detect myself because we all need to do that we lit we are so we are we are a slave to technology that we don't stop and smell the roses or in your case we don't stop and drink tea now and then uh, <laughs> so the biggest thing is help others be a little bit more compassionate stop and smell the roses a bit don't let life drive by so fast and i guess in a small way i'm kind of thankful this whole COVID is going on right now and people are like going what the hell are you talking about well it's easy right now it is forcing families to be together it's forcing people to slow down and say hey i need to get this done now i have the time to do it okay because we i'm like north americans canadians and americans we are some of the busiest people in the world that we don't take time to just slow down and take care of ourselves anymore and so this whole thing going on do you know what yeah take time okay talk to people do things going on i'm like i spent more time cleaning my place now and de-junking uh, in, in the past month than i've done in the past two years <laughs> Because it's giving me time to just get stuff done. I don't have any other product. I said I got one project I'm doing for somebody else. I just released my little short film the other day. I don't know if you've ever got a chance to see that. I've got a lot oh, of posts on that. Uh, what? Uh, that's my project, Echo. But I've I've got no other projects, and I've got 
very like even though streaming's still going on, it's not happening as much. Um, so I've got a lot of time on my hands. What do I do? Well, I'm getting back into some writing. I'm doing projects for other people that need it. Um, I'm like I said, like I had some comments saying, like, listen, hey, we're out of business, but we need to get this done. Like, going, do you know what? I'm on the mentality right now. Pay what you can. So, and that's the thing. I did a job for someone as well. I normally would have charged them like close to five hundred dollars. I only did for about fifty bucks. I didn't, for me, it's not a matter of like I like I like the money, but if it's going to help them in the long run, I'd rather be able to know that I can help them achieve something. It's the Tea with Mike show.